Skills and tactical thinking have been developing for over 200 years. Shrewd and pacey underhand bowling on the rough pitches of the day established their awesome reputations. Hampshireman David Harris and Lumpy Stevens, a former smuggler, were the most renowned bowlers of cricket's earliest recorded history, while James Cobbett was one of the first notable spin bowlers, making it buzz like a top. The great bowlers of the mid-19th century included John Wisdom, the tiny fast bowler who bowled all ten wickets over at Lord's in 1850, mighty Alfred Minn, the 18-stone Lion of Kent, William Clark, crafty old bowler who founded the Trent Bridge Ground and the money-making All England Wandering Eleven, William Lillywhite, the non pare who pioneered round-arm bowling, George Terham Tarrant, all over the place like a flash of lightning, according to W.G. Grace, and John Foghorn Jackson, the destructive Nottinghamshire pace bowler who was to die in abject poverty. But as the greatest batsman of all time, Sir Donald Bradman has observed, cricket came of age only when overarm bowling was introduced in 1864. It was a natural sequence to roundarm bowling, which had been made legal in 1835 after John Willis of Kent had dared to bowl it, only to be banished for his boldness. By 1862, Edgar Wilshire, a Kentish left armour and probably the best bowler in England at that time, had been humiliatingly no-balled at the Oval for raising his arm above shoulder level. He and eight fellow professionals walked off the field, but next day the umpire was replaced, and in 1864, MCC recognised the inevitable in evolution by altering Law 10 to permit the overarm bowling that's been in general use to this day.